When the WWE didn't do Elimination Chamber in February of this year in its you know somewhat traditional slot, I thought they were going to do away with the show concept once and for all, and maybe, best case scenario, bring it back as a stipulation match to be used at a more important pay-per-view like the way it was once rolled out and introduced as a main event for Survivor Series, which I always thought made a world of sense. You know, it was once a year, it was a special type of attraction, and it really helped accentuate the importance of one of your biggest and most important shows of the year. But now the WWE said after a few months, screw that, F it. We got a free month of the network to promote. We got May 31st open. Let's go ahead and plug Elimination Chamber back into the fold. Kind of a surprise. Now, you know, I have some concerns about the WWE's philosophy on this because this is the second time that they kind of just created a show out of thin air over the past two months now. They did it the previous month with the King of the Ring, uh, and uh, they're doing it again with Elimination Chamber. I have concerns about that in terms of they're just kind of throwing it in there to fill content on their network in hopes to try and promote the network. They're not really taking it that seriously. They're not putting a lot of effort into it. And you have concerns that you're kind of watering things down. Instead of doing fewer big shows, they're doing more big shows and creating more of the same problems that they had. However, the big difference to me between Elimination Chamber and King of the Ring is that King of the Ring was truly like an 11th hour afterthought and was just literally thrown out there with like, I think, two days notice and bam, here it is, King of the Ring, there you go. Whereas Elimination Chamber, at least, has been being talked about throughout the entire month of May and the company has done a better job of promoting it and hyping it up and treating it like a actual pay-per-view event. There's a big difference here. Like for King of the Ring, I actually didn't bother watching the whole thing. I didn't really care, in part because it was just thrown out there to get at the like the last minute. Elimination Chamber, though, I'm excited about. It. I'm more excited about it for sure than I was with Payback. Um, definitely WrestleMania 31, and maybe on par with like an Extreme Rules. I'm legitimately eagerly anticipating Elimination Chamber. I'm excited about it. You've got two Elimination Chamber matches, giving guys opportunities and spotlight type of matches. Uh, you've got a world title match that I'm looking forward to, a U.S. championship match that I'm really looking forward to. A decent match card. Now, I'm not expecting the world out of this, but I expect it to be a good show this coming Sunday. Now, let me take a look at the actual card itself. And... I at least got to say that I applaud the WWE's efforts somewhat, even though they didn't do a great job of it. They at least seem to try, when piecing together the card for this show, to make the matches have some type of purpose and some type of meaning. Like you've got Bo Dallas versus Neville. They've at least tried to give a real reason for there to be an issue between Bo Dallas and Neville. It's not just simply, hey, these guys wrestled once, they wrestled twice, let's wrestle them again this time on the main show, on the pay-per-view. No, you've had Bo Dallas, you know, come after Neville's knee, tried to take his knee out from him, tried to ground him, and, you know, all of these things. An actual an attempt to tell some type of story, an actual attempt to try and create some type of issue or rivalry between these guys. Perfect. I love it. That's fine. The perfect type of filler match on a pay-per-view show is something like a Bo Dallas versus no. No. Uh, you've got the Divas triple threat. Now, to me, in a lot of ways, they still do the same old formatting with the Divas. They haven't changed shit. There ain't shit different. Now you've got a triple threat. It's the Nikki Bella defending against Paige and Naomi, at least they're bothering to remember that Paige had the title shot, so now she's got it. You've got Naomi. It's kind of hard because you don't really know who to cheer for here, who to really boo for here. Um, and yeah, a lot of times it's just about the Bellas or somebody in the Divas division being on fucking commentary while there's another match. I wish they would actually bother to try and give a fuck because they still don't. And if you think they really give a fuck about the Divas just because they give them a couple of more minutes on a match... What the fuck does that mean? Instead of giving them two minutes, they give them four or five. They don't give a fuck. It's a shame they should. 
Again, as I've said before, why the hell have a Divas division if you're not going to care about them? I know most certainly if I'm investing any type of real money into an aspect of my business or my product, in this case, the Divas division, which you are investing money into, uh, you would think you'd want to get a return on that investment and as big of a return on your investment as you possibly can. Especially when you're talking about these ladies, you could get quite a big return on a minimal investment. So why not do more with them? Uh, the match itself could actually be pretty good, you know, and hopefully it's given the time that it needs. And with this particular show only having six matches, hopefully that is what happens. That match gets plenty of time. I'm sure there's going to be maybe one more match thrown in as a filler. Uh, maybe they could do like a Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton. No, that's the type of feud that should head towards a SummerSlam. That's the type of feud that should have a type of story. But they need to maybe throw one other match in here to help the flow of this show. Uh, then we get to the two chamber matches, the tag title match and the IC title ladder match. Or not ladder match, the IC title chamber match, excuse me, and the tag title match. Um, my one concern about the tag title chamber match is that I think with that many people in there, it could possibly get a bit convoluted. It could get kind of crowded. Um, so I, my hope would be is that they would eliminate one or two teams pretty early on to open things up. Because otherwise it could be kind of like a crash test dummy situation where everybody's kind of bumping into everybody. Um, then on the flip side, I have a concern about the IC title chamber match because you've got guys like uh, Ryback in there and our truth in there. I mean, I don't know if this is really going to be a great chamber match. Uh, I, they could be, though. You know, the tag the tag title chamber match, uh, I would venture, I guess, at this point in time, might be the better one, especially if it's given a time. Now, the problem is, is that with you having two chamber matches, you're probably going to open the show with one of them, and I would assume at this point in time, you're probably opening with the tag title match. That would be my assumption. I could be wrong. Um, in terms of the tag title match, uh, you got to keep going with New Day. If you were going to have anybody win those belts at this point in time, I'd actually like to see it be the primetime players. Uh, yes, it would be a matter of the black guys feeding with the other black guys, but at this point in time, it would get more black guys on TV, so why the fuck not do it? And the story could work. In terms of the IC title match, who should win that belt? Ziggler is a fuck no. And I seriously hope that you guys aren't hoping for Ziggler to win that IC title. Why the fuck would you want him to win the IC title at this point in time? I'm assuming either he's going to eliminate Rusev or more likely not Rusev's going to eliminate him and they're going to continue the story between these two guys. Um, fucking give it to our truth. <laughs> Why not? Why not? He'll probably give it to Sheamus. And that's fine, I guess. And if they want to launch into a full-blown program between Sheamus and Ryback, again, that's fine with me, too. Um, that could work because uh, Barrett's already king of the ring, so he's got his own thing to run with. I don't know if he needs a second thing to run with. Uh, so I would assume that the New Day will retain, and I would assume that Sheamus will win the IC title. That would seem to make the most sense to me. But then we get to the two matches on this card that I really give a crap about and really have me somewhat excited, actually, for Elimination Chamber this Sunday versus the U.S. title match between Kevin Owens and John Cena. I am geeked for this. I am pumped for this. I am stoked for this because this is the match that I wanted, albeit it is several months earlier than it should be occurring, in my opinion. Now, in terms of Kevin Owens versus John Cena, there are a lot of people, I think, that will say that Kevin Owens has to win this match and perhaps beat Cena. I agree, but not right now. I don't think it's the right timing for it just yet. Um, in terms of those, and there will be those that say that Cena needs to go over here. You can't have the NXT guy go over your top guy because what does that do to Cena's character? I would somewhat dispute that because... Is a loss really going to hurt Cena? I mean, come on. It's the whole thing of anybody could beat anybody on any given day. And they talk about it all the time in the NFL. That's why they play the game in my best drunken Chris Berman voice. Um, so why couldn't a Kevin Owens beat a John Cena one time? To me, I think the best finish you could have in this match is for Kevin Owens to get disqualified and maybe put out Cena. Because uh, I don't want there to be a decisive finish here. I want this to be a table setter for something that will come later on down the road, hopefully at least at a SummerSlam. 
So I'm kind of disappointed that this got thrown together so quickly because I thought this is something that should have sat there, should have festered, should have hung as a bit of a cloud over John Cena's head and the character and maybe going on towards SummerSlam. And then you could maybe entertain the thought of doing that here. Now, if you were going to do it and you do have a decisive finish here, then I will side with the fact that Kevin Owens needs to beat John Cena and become the new U.S. champion. And the reason being is is you sit there and keep playing grab ass with Cena and this U.S. title, and he plows through everybody, and there's nobody to fucking beat him at any point in time. This is a guy that people are going to take seriously as a credible, legitimate threat to him, even though you know Rusev had several opportunities and couldn't get the job done, ultimately. You also look at it with Kevin Owens. This is a guy with him being the NXT champion. It could open up some different things. You could have him take Cena's belt. That means so much to him. And then you could have Cena try to go after Kevin Owens and the belt that means so much to him. Does that make sense? Because at some point in time, they've got to find a way to get rid of one of these two mid-card titles. Having a U.S. and IC title does not make a lot of sense when you have a combined roster like they do now. And you could sit there and even have the great one himself, John Cena, fucking wrestle on NXT one time at maybe your next NXT show. You could main event him and Owens, and that would get a lot of people interested and a lot of people intrigued on what exactly NXT is doing. The dynamics of this works, so I'm looking forward to this, and I'm eager to see what the WWE does with this. Is this is just another LOL Cena wins and fuck them. Just fuck them. You know, the Breakfast Club wins in rules, bitches, but they don't always have to. Um, and then we get to the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. There's a part of me that wants them to go with Ambrose because I don't think Rollins as a champ is working all that particularly well, which is a shame because it should have. In a lot of ways, he was the right champion for them post-WrestleMania 31. It's just some of the things they've done. Uh, haven't worked, and some of the things they've done have hurt Rollins as a champion, in my opinion. So there's a part of me that just wants to see something get shooken up, something to be done differently here. But I also understand the patience of it, too. You're trying to maybe build up to Rollins and Lesnar having a return engagement at SummerSlam. You might perhaps have bigger things involved or in store for Ambrose come money in the bank, and this match here is being used as a plot device to help tell that story of maybe Ambrose perhaps winning Money in the Bank and cashing in on Rollins at, let's say, a SummerSlam, which would be one idea you could do. The other idea would obviously be Reigns, where you're throwing that in here. I don't really know. I mean, I find it very hard to envision anything other than Seth Rollins retaining here is what's going to happen. I'd be very stunned, pleasantly so, if Ambrose won here. I know there will be some thoughts on maybe because of how closely associated Reigns and Ambrose have been on television, that this will be where maybe Reigns will actually get involved and either align himself with the authority or at least split away from Ambrose and his friendship and turn on Dean Ambrose and you begin a program with them heading into SummerSlam. That's possible. And I think that's something that could happen at some point, maybe should happen at some point. I just don't think you should start that just yet. You know, because when we got to Ambrose versus Rollins the last time and we got to the big blow off of their feud, you know, Wyatt got involved and then it was him and Ambrose going forward and it didn't really feel satisfying. I wish this was going to be one of these situations where it was just these two guys. There's no Kane. There's no J&J &J security. Not from a, a K Fabish, Marcus type of standpoint. If I want to see what Ambrose can do, no, I just want to see the bullshit kick rocks and I just want to see these two guys wrestle. I don't want to see all the other shit. I don't want to see all of this. And if you do something, make it one thing and make it impactful. But if you have Kane and J&J &J Security come out and they're interfering, then all of a sudden Roman Reigns comes out to try and save the day and or then turns on Ambrose. It's just more convoluted bullshit, frankly. And I hope we don't get convoluted bullshit with this WWE World Heavyweight Championship match between Ambrose and Rollins. Because these two guys can go in the ring with each other, and these guys could deliver a main event quality pay-per-view match, and I hope that's what they're allowed to do. But again, I'm really excited about the U.S. title match. It's Ambrose versus Rollins for the main title, and that's got me excited. I'm excited to see the two chamber matches. You know, I, I want to see what Bo Dallas and Neville can do. Frankly, the only match I don't really give that many fucks about is the Divas Triple Threat. That's one match out of six. And compared out of what I've seen out of WWE in recent months, if not years, when it comes to their shows, man, my excitement level for Elimination Chamber is a lot higher than I anticipated and a lot higher than it's been for a lot of other shows in quite some time. I think you could even tell in my voice a little bit, not a ton of negative stuff to say. Can you imagine that? What say you, though?
What do you think is going to happen Sunday at Elimination Chamber? Is it going to be good? Is it going to blow? Is it going to be a bunch of surprises? Is it going to be a bunch of lame-ass shit? You let me know in the comment section below.